<laughs> hey everyone, it's Kong again with another episode of Should You Summon? As always, I'm going to be presenting high-level overviews using these four criteria to help you decide whether this banner is worth your hard-earned vouchers and crystals. So let's get right into this Raid Up banner featuring the launch of the latest new characters from Langrisser Reincarnation Tensei, Elma and Cortez, running from my birthday, January 27th, to February 10th. As a Raid Up banner, you have a 40% chance to get each on-banner character, with the remaining 20% reserved for any other hero in the regular summoning pool. So let's get started with Elma. Elma is a healer. Her talent increases healing received for nearby allies, and lets her summon a little buddy who gives some bonus effects, including an additional cast of an area healing spell if you like. Her 3C is like Miracle on Steroids. It's a big area heal, it boosts damage dealt, reduces damage taken, and it gives Elma an aura that makes nearby allies immune to heal block. It also makes Elma herself not only immune to debuffs, but able to reflect debuffs back at the enemy caster. She also has a 2 cost skill that lets her grant this reflective effect to an ally, and another skill that lets her teleport a distant ally back to her position and heal them. This teleport skill also lets her passively heal a nearby ally after her action, so if you've been keeping track, she has several chances to heal allies every turn. She's a member of Protagonists, buffed by Matthew and Lovina the Great, Langrisser Reincarnation, buffed by Ares and Hilda, and Legion of Glory, buffed by Ledin, Helwyn, and Grenier. For bonds, she unlocks the defensive bond for the upcoming new character, Lovina the Great, and for her own bonds, she needs Ares for her defensive bond and Light of Genesis for her attack bond. For content, in PvE, she's on faction for Phoenix and Scylla in the Eternal Temple, and technically also for Hugin and Munin and Sleipnir in Ancient Beckoning. She should actually be a good healer for content where you cluster around a boss, where you'll be able to take advantage of her bonus effects for nearby allies. Similarly, on the PvP side, she'll be better used in tank push style teams that like to stick together. Her teleport skill will let you recall an adventurous DPS back into your formation. She has a couple instances of outright debuff immunity in her kit, but not a ton of actual debuff cleansing. That's not necessarily a bad thing, it just puts the ball more in your court. It's more active debuff protection rather than reactive debuff protection. What she does have is a lot of healing. A lot of healing. For availability, she'll be coming back in mid-June on the special Valentine's Day trade-in banner alongside Ares. That means if you're not dying to get her and start using her right away, she'll actually be much easier and safer to get then, so that's something to think about. Next up we have Cortez. Cortez is a magical AoE unit. He does have a couple of unique things going on with his kit. His talent gives him an option of two additional actions he can take every time he ends his turn. He can either do some AoE damage, or he can apply his talent debuff. This debuff makes the enemy do less damage to him, and boosts his int when attacking them. If he kills an affected enemy with certain skills, he turns them into a puppet who can ignore guard and spread debuffs. Really creepy stuff. His 3 cost skill is a pretty standard debuffing AoE that also heals him by 20% for each enemy hit. Among his normal skills, he has another AoE that lets him steal a buff and applies his talent debuff to the affected enemies. He has a skill that lets him copy the class of a targeted ally and then act again, useful for extending his range or burning off cooldowns. He also has a Dark Reaper-like single target attack that ignores 15% magic defense and restores his health. He's a member of Dark Reincarnation, buffed by Bozel and Licorice, and Langrisser Reincarnation, buffed by Ares and Hilda. For bonds, he doesn't roadblock anyone else's bonds for now, and for his own bonds he needs Licorice for his defensive bond and Patsir for his attack bond. For content, in PvE he's on faction for Leviar, and he's a newly minted member of top-scoring leaderboarding teams against Fenrir and Sleipnir, so look for Professor Kutaru to be summoning a few copies. He's actually a pretty threatening unit in PvP as well, kind of playing a similar role as Kruger. His faction buff options are a little bit limited, but he is able to boost himself against his selected targets, so that helps. If you're already playing an AoE rush box anyway, then you'll definitely want to think about whether you can fit him into your team. 
for availability. At the time of this recording, he doesn't show up on the upcoming banner schedule yet, but given that his banner mate Elma is coming back in mid-June on that Valentine banner, and Kruger got bumped off to another raid-up banner around that time, there's a pretty decent chance that he'll take Kruger's spot on the recurring Dark banner alongside Lestelle and Renata. It's not a guarantee, it's just a guess. So here's the quick and dirty. We've got Elma, who's a clumped-up healing specialist who unlocks the defensive bond for Lavina the Great, and we have Cortez, who's a hard-hitting AoE debuffer who turns killed enemies into mindless minions. He's also a new meta option versus Fenrir and Sleipnir. And this brings us to the notes for noobs. Elma is a nice option for stay-at-home healing and debuff protection. There are a lot of good healers, but healers are good, so it's good to have good healers. She also unlocks a bond for an upcoming faction buffer. I wouldn't say she's essential, but you shouldn't be upset if you do end up getting her by accident. Just bear in mind, if you're going to attempt to summon for her deliberately, she'll be easier and safer to get on her Valentine's Raid Up banner in a few months. Cortez is a strong meta unit for two Ancient Beckoning fights, which is the only PvE mode where specific character selection really matters. He's also strong in PvP, at least in certain specific kinds of boxes. Even though he's not a must-have in the same sense as Waytham or Lucretia, the fact that he's good in multiple modes makes him a safe summon. Decide based on your goals and resources. Finally, just my usual note about upcoming banners. Next week we have a raid-up banner featuring Epsilon and Hilda. Now that Epsilon's unique weapon is available in the Secret Realm shop, they figured you might want to take another shot at actually summoning him. In fact, if he's a key part of your Apex Arena plans, you might want to hold off here and wait and see how your Epsilon summoning goes before coming back to this banner. In the weeks after that, we'll have Destiny banners featuring the Sage of the Trees, Wheeler, and Mew, Bozel, Liana, and Luna, and Vincent, Zerida, and Claret. Next month's major update will see the launch of Emperor Lavina, who's the new faction buffer for protagonists, and the Saint of the Ark. The only other thing to mention here is that Lewin's new SP class is also available this week, but thankfully his Heart of Desire comes from an event, so you don't have to earmark any crystals to gamble for it. Alright, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you found this video and these summaries helpful enough to warrant a little thumbs up, and also let me know in the comments if you're planning on summoning for either of these characters or if you're in save-up mode. I'll be summoning at least a little bit during my birthday stream on Thursday morning, so we'll see if Lucyrus and RN Jesus want to give me a nice birthday present of good luck. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you don't manage to swing by the stream, then I'll catch you in the next Should You Summon. Extra special thanks of course to our Langrisser tier channel members for generously supporting the channel directly. So thank you Levitt, Derek Gunderson, William Householder, Kate Soon, Jared Portela, Eden Seal, Titan Bradicus, Shara Illimerius, and Jerome Meyer.